Greetings and applesauce, gents and dames. Today on Overanalyze Adventures, we're going to talk about a man who isn't a floor flusher, but he still is a Gasper smoking giggly. I can't do this. Yeah, I can't pretend like I know any 1920 slang. Well, anyway, let's restart. Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am some guy, and welcome to Overanalyze Adventures. And we're going to start a new series. A series about what is arguably one of my favorite games of last year. And that's Gunderslavs and Wadget Eyes, A Golden Wake. Made by Francisco Gonzalez, who now works for Wadget Eye and is currently working on something that is no doubt amazing. But I digress. I feel like before I get started on this series, I should point out and make it very clear what Overanalyze Adventures is about. Overanalyzed Adventures is all about taking the piss out of the things that I love, and that's adventure games. And I want to stress that A Golden Wake is a damn fine game, and arguably one of the best adventure games that came out last year. But that's not going to stop me from taking the piss out of it, folks. Because if you love something, you have to degrade it. At least that's what my father told me. Oh, well, well, yeah, let's get a little personal now. So, let's get started on the overanalysis of A Golden Wake. Yes, let my mouth essentially caress that font. I mean, let's go ahead and start a new game. And this is undeniably one of the cool features about A Golden Wake. The game actually depicts real life people who live, died, have Wikipedia pages about them. So it's pretty damn cool that Francisco Gonzalez put all this effort into making his game. Now naturally, this isn't how they were in real life, unless Mr. Gonzalez is actually a time traveler. And if he is, why is he wasting his potential on making old school adventure games? Seems like he should kill Hitler or something. Well, Alfie, old boy, looks like it's another day, another dollar. So here's our hero, Alfred Banks, and no, it's not the same Alfred as in the Batman series, although that would be pretty damn cool. Hell, in fact, we could pretend that this is Alfred during his formative pre-Batman years. But that's a different game. Hey, this is Alfred Banks, or Alfie Banks. He sells houses and works with two jackasses. Let's meet him. Morning, fellas. What's the good word? Good morning, Banks. Morning, Banks. Horse feathers, why is it so hot in here? Gosh, language, Alfie. Morris apparently has a chill. He set the heating on as high as it goes this morning. Suggs and I had to prop the door open so we didn't sweat to death. We must be raking in a fair amount this month if he can afford to do that. And I can afford to skip over most of this scene. These two characters are... Well, they seem like something out of a pulp novel. One seems like a private dick, the other seems like a henchman for a Batman villain. And all you really need to know about them is that they're jealous of Alfie because Alfie is a savant when it comes to real estate. He is outselling these two fools. In fact, it doesn't even seem like this firm even needs anyone besides Alfie because that's how good he is at selling houses. But nevertheless, after Alfie... Alfie gets done talking to his two co-workers, he meets with his boss. Good morning, Evan. Sug said you wanted to see me? Have a seat, Alfie. This doesn't seem like a conversation that's going to be pleasant. I'm afraid it isn't. You know I'm not the type to beat around the bush, so here's the long and the short of it. We're not doing well. Sales are minimal and the competition is popping up all over town like a bad rash. I hate to do it, but we're going to have to let someone go. I see. Uh, who did you have in mind? That's mainly why I asked to see you, Alfie. You have more contact with Suggs and Murphy, so I think this decision should be yours. Ah, uh, well, uh, I'm kind of on the spot here, but... Oh boy, it sounds to me like Alfie's boss is scared of confrontation or lacks a backbone. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is we're faced with a choice, and a pretty damn serious one for so early on in the game. One of two characters that we've just met and know nothing about other than they kind of suck at selling real estate are going to be fired. And it's our responsibility to choose who. Sounds pretty cool. I think Murphy should be the one let go. He means well. And so does this game. Your choice, whether it's Suggs or Murphy, doesn't have any effect on the story. What happens, happens regardless of your choice. So it begs the question, do you actually have a choice when the outcome, regardless of your choice, has already been predetermined? <coughs> <coughs> yeah, some philosophy there. 
and the son of a bitch says clear as day he means well, but doesn't perform as well as he could. Can you believe it? I'd be performing three times as well if Golden Boy didn't take all the good leads first. I mean, just because he's Hiram's son doesn't entitle him to- Hey, quiet, somebody's coming. Now, it's not particularly clear if Alfie overheard this conversation or if he's oblivious to this and this is just something us, the player, the viewer, we're privy to. But nevertheless, you think maybe we could react on this knowledge? No, we're not going to. Alfie's screwed. He's made enemies of his only co-workers. Well, at least the boss still trusts him. No, thank you very much, Mr. Contis. A pleasure doing business with you. Hmm, five sales in 30 minutes. I think that might be a new record. Now, Alfie, when you say it out loud like that in front of your other co-workers who are struggling, it does make you seem like kind of a dick. Alfie, can you come here a moment? What is it, Evan? I'm running late for the weekly shareholders meeting. Could you lock up my office for me? Of course. Here's the key. I'll be back shortly. I don't believe this man's in much of a hurry, I just think he's pretty damn lazy. Cause come on, think about it, in the time it took him to tell Alfie to lock up after him, he could have done it himself. That door's right there behind him, it just seems like this guy's a lazy bastard. Look, it didn't even take a second to lock that door. In fact, I'm going on to put the door longer than it takes to lock that door. Look, I even timed it. So in case you can't tell, Alfie's being set up. He must be a nice guy and his co-workers must know it because one of them is faking breaking a light bulb. And Alfie comes in and does, you know, the white knight thing and helps him out while the other guy sets him up for when the boss comes back, which is now. I'm back, Alfie. Got my key? Yes, Evan, it's right. Hmm, odd. I thought I'd put it in my other pocket. Anyway, here you are. Alfie? Yes? Where are tomorrow's leads? I beg your pardon? The leads for tomorrow? The ones that were on my desk? They're no longer on my desk. Where have they gone? Look, I'll get Suggs and Murphy together and we'll look for them. Or maybe you could just look under Banks' hat, Mr. Morris. <gasps> They're underneath Alfie's hat. And again, if you chose the other guy, you get a slightly different version of events, but I'm not even going to go into what happens because all we need to know is Alfie gets fired. <gasps> it seems kind of weird to me in all honesty. After all, Alfie's a star salesman, but whatever, his boss believes in honor and all that, I guess. Or maybe he just doesn't like Alfie. Maybe he's jelly of Alfie's mad dope sales skills, y'all. Oh, God, I'm becoming a southern rapper. Let's get to the point where Alfie's fired. But for now, I think you should take an indefinite leave of absence. Fine. I see how it is. Well, you know what? Now that I think about it, perhaps Morris is just under the weather. Maybe he has a flu and is clouding his judgment because why else would he fire his superstar salesman? Yeah, that has to be it. After all, earlier on in the game, it was explained that Morris cranked up the heat because he had the chills, so that's an obvious flu-like symptom. So yeah. He's just sick and he's not thinking very clearly right now. So you know what, Alfie should just hang out, not do anything rash like move to Miami, and just wait for Morris to call him back and apologize. So yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a reasonable thing to do. I guess I'll see you fellas around. Hey, no odd feelings, Banks. Here you go. See? They ain't even wooden. <laughs> Taking an early lunch, Mr. Banks? No, I... Sure, just... Taking an early lunch. Well, if you need anything to read while you eat, I still got plenty of papers left. Oh yeah, that's some sexy signposting right there, ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between. This game's good for that. You see, a golden wake likes to tell you in very nonchalant and subtle ways what you need to do. Naturally, we need to buy a paper. And when we read the paper, we uncover some very interesting news. Hmm, what's this? Merrick making waves in Florida? Miami, eh? I've always heard that place was nothing more than glorified swampland. Remember I said Alfie should just sit around and not do anything rash? Well, that's not Alfie's game. But I'll be damned if I'm just gonna roll over and freeze to death up here. When I'm finished down there, the name Banks will finally mean something again. So, Mr. Merrick, let's just see what you've got to offer. So, because he saw into the paper, Alfie's going down to Miami. Seems a bit rash to me. You know, he could have looked for another job in New York. After all, his boss said there was a bunch of other firms popping up, but hey, we have to find a reason to get Alfie down to Miami. So, Alfie gets down to Miami and meets a lovely man at the train station. Hello, Miami. Alfie Banks has a raw. Oh, horse feathers. This humidity is something else. Right, 
I've got my luggage claim ticket. Now I just need to find this Hotel Belmont and... Hey there! Hello? Are you speaking to me, sir? You see anybody else around, son? Come on over here and have a chat with old Doc Dammers, why don't you? Ah, uh, yes, here is the first of the actual real people we meet that actually lived in Miami during this time. Doc Dammers was a real man. And now he's really helping out Alfie by telling him what's up with Coral Gables. All we need to know is that Merrick's the man, but he just don't let anyone meet with him. No, 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 no. You gotta kind of prove your worth. And right now, Alfie just showed up. So he gonna go to the hotel and check in and all that. And then he gonna waltz upstairs and collect some vital items. You know, some typewriter ribbon, a picture of your father and his bondage gear, and a bit of salesman advice. You know, the basic necessities. So from here, Alfie makes his way to Mr. Merrick's office. Because Alfie's dead set on getting a job with him, because he read about him in the paper, so that's enough motivation. Pardon me, miss. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but I'm just too busy for you right now. Perhaps you could come back another time? Ah, yes, the gatekeeper will not allow us to pass. But fortunately, she's struggling having to write out a bunch of letters by hand. Well, not that you'd care, but I need to get these letters written. And seeing as the weekly shipment of supplies has been delayed, I'm forced to do them by hand. And conveniently enough, Alfie Banks, for really no apparent reason, likes to travel with typewriter ribbon. I don't know, maybe he was expecting to sell it at a substantial markup, like you know what people used to do with blue jeans in France in the 70s. But yeah, I'm getting off topic here. Needless to say, though, Alfie gives her the typewriter ribbon, and then... Would it be possible to make an appointment? to see Mr. Merrick. Certainly. Let me see. Our next available appointment is... next November. So Alfie's humble bribe of a typewriter ribbon just wasn't enough. So now, what's the poor man to do? Well, it turns out this lady has an idea for him. If Alfie goes down to the land auction and makes a name for himself there, perhaps Merrick will see him, because he's always looking for fresh talent. Come on, folks, it's a beautiful day to buy some land. Hey, this scene looks mightily familiar. Yeah, yeah. I'm on to you, Mr. Gonzalez. I know you know Google Foo. Yeah, this really drives home the point that this game is based off of reality, and that Mr. Gonzalez is potentially a time traveler or someone who likes to do due diligence. But yeah, now we're at the land auction. And conveniently enough, Mr. Dammer's old doc apparently likes Alfie, and he tells him, Hey, hey, I know how to get in with Merrick because the old doc works for Merrick. So he tells Alfie that he has to help him sell some land to two groups of people, which conveniently are two different puzzle varieties for us to tantalize our brains with. See those two sets of stragglers over there, separate from the crowd? They're all about a hair's breadth away from buying, but I just can't get them to budge. Take your pick. If you can convince either set to buy some houses, I just might put in a good word for you back at the sales office. So I suppose I should talk about the puzzles briefly now. The first puzzle involving the group of people is a sort of matching puzzle. You see each group, they have their own particular needs, and there's houses that provide particular things. So you have to think and figure out who belongs with which house. It's pretty damn nifty, and it's also pretty unfortunate that this is the only time in the game we get to see a puzzle like this. Though it's pretty cool and really fun, you actually have to think about what people want. And the other puzzle involves the lone guy who's all by himself. And this puzzle is our first exposure to a pretty nifty system that this game has. It's this weird sort of dialogue system that's a puzzle. You see, you have to use your seller intuition to get a feel for the guy, and then you have to answer their questions based upon what your intuition says their character's like. So you do actually have to do some thinking with each one of your dialogue choices to try to convince these people to do whatever you want them to do. It's pretty damn nifty, and it's one of the few times that have actually seen a dialogue system also work as a puzzle system. So hats off to you, Mr. Developer. So needless to say, it really doesn't matter who you choose as long as you solve the puzzle. And after Alfie successfully solves the puzzle, old Dammers is like, yeah, you did a damn fine job, son. And then you get the news that you can meet with Merrick. So let's catch up with that. Ah, uh, yes, he's expecting you, Mr. Banks. Go ahead and knock on his door there. I'll let you get back to your work. Thank you, sir. Come in. Good afternoon, Mr. Merrick. I'm Alfred Banks. You wanted to see me? Ah, yes, of course. Mr. Banks. Please come in. Make yourself at home. 
So now we get to meet Mr. Merrick, and yes, he was a real man who did real things really during this time period. I even found a photo of him, and here it is. And yes, again, does a great job of capturing his likeness, minus all that black and white thing, but what can you do? It really is a pleasure to finally meet you, Mr. Merrick. Like I said, my name is Alfred Banks, and... I know who you are, Mr. Banks. I was well aware of your father's work up north. It seems apparent that you are eagerly following in his footsteps. You've gotten my attention. Now let's see how serious you really are. I see great potential in you, but a good sales agent needs more than just talent. He needs ability and know-how. I've got those in spades. You're certainly confident, I'll give you that. In any case, I have a few small setbacks which I need to deal with, and I think they would serve as an excellent proving ground for you. So Alfie boy must endear three trials in order to get a job with Merrick. A very interesting and to say the least unique interview process. But at the same time too, it just seems like Merrick needs someone to take a fall for him in case there's any backlash. You know, plausible deniability. Because when you see what old Merrick wants Alfie to do, it does strike me as a little bit shady. The first task that old Merrick has for Alfie is pretty straightforward. He has to convince a holdout to sell his land. Although Merrick goes about it in a kind of mobster sounding way, it's a reasonable thing that a land developer would do. But the second one, hmm. Let's just hear what old Merrick has to say for himself, shall we? I'd like you to head over to the Miami Herald building and see if you can befriend a reporter or two. Having a journalist in our corner would do wonders for our advertising. Now, Merrick calls it advertising, I call it collusion and an ethics violation for any journalist. Come on, what Merrick's asking for here is not advertising. You pay people to make advertisement for you. What Merrick wants is reporters in his back pocket to write fluff pieces about his development. That's pretty damn shady to say the least. As is the final task for old Alfie, and that's get back some plans that have been stolen. Do we actually know that these are stolen plans? We only have Merrick's word to take on this, and considering he wants us to find patsies at the local paper, it seems like ethics and integrity may not be top priorities on Merrick's list. But oh well. Alfie, being naive, despite being from a major city, goes about blindly with his duties for Merrick. Yes? May I help you? Well, this holdout really looks like Beaker to me. You know the Muppet? Here's a picture of him. Yeah, uncanny almost. But nevertheless, Alfie's gonna put on his sweet sleazy salesman moves and try to get this guy and his poor Muppet to sell his house. Good day to you, sir. My name is Alfred Banks, and whatever it is you're selling, I'm not interested. Ah, but I'm not here to sell you anything. In fact, quite the contrary. Oh, I see. Merrick sent you, didn't he? I... Well, yes, he did. Look, you can go back and tell him exactly what I told all the others. Nothing doing. I bought this land before he got his little vision, and I intend to keep it. I tried appeasing him by building my house to match his Mediterranean style, but apparently even that wasn't good enough. I did everything by the book and filed all the proper paperwork. You tell Merrick he'll get me off this land when I'm no longer drawing breath. Good day to you, sir. You know what, you have to be sympathetic for this Muppet. He did everything by the book. Does Merrick really need this land? Is this house really that essential to his overall vision? I mean, it's not really clear what Merrick's going to do with the land, but I guess it doesn't matter because we're just trying to get a job with him. So this guy's got to go, regardless of him kind of being in the right. But nevertheless, Alfie just goes down to the Hall of Records and speaks to this greaser guy, and then he finds out that maybe some of the paperwork for the house wasn't filed correctly. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> we have him on technicality now, folks. So we go back to the house and then demand an inspection because apparently a proper one wasn't done. And why this guy just lets Alfie into his house, it doesn't matter. What matters is, folks, we have a dirty, rotten, filthy, hidden object game to play. It makes sense, I suppose, in this context, but... It's as easy as any hidden object thing. Try to find the objects so they're hidden. And then once you do all that, well... Let's just listen to the poor Muppet try to plead his case. So this is what it's come to. I see how it is. You come in here playing the White Knight, but you're no better than any of the rest of them. I did what I had to do to keep my land, but I suppose that was all for naught. Fine. I'll call up Mr. Merrick and tell him he's won. I hope you can live with yourself, you snake. I'm sure I'll manage. Have a nice afternoon, sir. So, next on Alfie's hit list is going to the Miami Herald and finding a patsy. May I have a moment? 
You may. I'm Alfred Banks, and I believe you have the advantage. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. And she was a real live, breathing, feeling, doing human being. She was a noted feminist and journalist who worked in Miami during this time period. Also, she worked as a conservationist, fighting hard to protect the Everglades and to preserve the natural splendor of Florida. Hell, the Florida Environmental Protection Agency's building is named after her, and she received a great deal of awards, both in her life and after death. I mean, she was a great lady all around. Pleasure. What is it you do around here, Miss Douglas? I write articles, conduct interviews, and investigate stories. Mr. Merrick asked me to come here and inquire about possibly getting someone to do a bit of publicity for him. Ah, suddenly it all becomes clear. Let's get something straight right now. I'm not some dumb Dora at anyone's beck and call. If Merrick wants a reporter in his pocket, it'll have to be someone else. I'm far too busy to find myself on the leash of some land developer and his cronies. Yeah, she makes a good point, but old Alfie Banks is not one to give up. So eventually a deal is struck. Basically, she'll help Merrick if Alfie can help her uncover some dirty politician's dirty laundry. Basically, Alfie has to go down to the men's club and find out if this politician drinks because he's all pro-prohibition. Yeah, prohibition was a thing back then. But it turns out it's not that easy to get into the club. You just can't waltz in there. You have to join it. And in order to join it, Alfie gonna need some help from Mr. Merrick, who helps him. I mean, for a man who's supposedly booked up till November of next year, Merrick doesn't seem to be doing much of anything, but whatever. I'm not a real estate mogul. Maybe he's... I don't know what he's doing. But either way, once you get the necessary items, you're able to go inside the club after bribing the maitre d or, or whatever he is. Say, friend, you've really been a great help today. I'd like to give you a little something for your trouble. Why, thank you, Mr. Banks. Ah, well, what do you know? It seems the results of your evaluation are in, and you've passed with flying colors. Welcome to the Miami Men's Club. Please feel free to use any of the club's amenities at your leisure. And of course, if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. May I take your hat, sir? Yes, of course. Much appreciated. Well, look at this, boys. It seems we've got a new member. But where are my manners? I'm Jeremiah Miller, County Commissioner, District 2. So yeah, Alfie chit-chats with the politician for a while, and then he walks around and tries to talk to some of the other members, and finds out one of them's pretty tanked in the corner. And then he tells Mr. Pro-Prohibition about it, who's gonna give that drunkard a piece of his mind. Evans, are you drunk? Evans, answer me. Good lord, how much have you had? You're a hazard. What if I wanted to light a cigarette? You're a disgrace to the good name of this club. By God, that man had a family. He is broken in half. Yeah, um, dude's knocked out cold and no one seems to care. He must not have any friends in this club. Either way... Uh, we now have what we need to give to Miss Douglas, who in turn will write the good press about the development. And now Alfie just has one more thing that he needs to do before he gets his sweet job with old Merrick. And it's a mild corporate espionage and stealing. Pardon me, miss. Hmm? What can I help you with, sir? Oh. Wow, I, I think there's something really wrong with her hands. But anyway, she lets you into the meeting with the real estate guy. You go through a little bit of a Q&A with him, and you realize that this guy seems like a really nice bang-up dude who you're just gonna screw over because you blindly trust Merrick. I mean, his operation is pretty damn shoddy. I really doubt he stole anything. I suspect he just has a really good idea, and this dude's just kind of bad at business because he's so nice. Oh, bless his heart. We might as well be stealing from a blind man. And in all honesty, I don't know if the intent is to make Alfie seem naive or to just kind of drive home the moral ambiguity about everything that Alfie's doing. Because when you think about it, everything Alfie's done has been morally and ethically dubious. He's not exactly taking the high road. He's trying to cheat people and ruin their lives in the name of Merrick. 
So it's pretty cool. I kind of like this moral ambiguity. And I also like this little safe puzzle here. Hey, we swap off the plans and now we go back to America. He'll be our best friend for life, right? Oh, actually, no, we're just getting a job with him. A lot of work just to get a damn job. Hopefully, he's paying us pretty damn good. The stuff we went through, I mean, that's that pretty intense. Made a bunch of enemies, actually. Politician, that guy, real estate dude. Hmm. Please, have a seat. Here you are, Mr. Merrick. I got your design plans back from Riley. Very impressive work, Banks. Did you get the job, too? I'm not quite sure about that, sir. <laughs> well, for the time being, let's hope you didn't. I don't want Riley stealing anything else from me. I'll just get to it, then. I wish you the best of luck. I believe that's everything taken care of, Mr. Merrick. You know, when you first walked through that door, I had a feeling there was something special about you. I'm glad to see my assumptions were well placed. Welcome aboard the Golden Galleon, Banks. I think you're going to do wonders for us. The Golden Galleon, sir? Yes, it's our new slogan. Dammers came up with it. Follow the Golden Galleon to Coral Gables, where your castles in Spain are made real. It certainly has a ring to it. That it does. Now then, there's no time to waste. I've got some big plans for the next few years, and I'm going to need all the help I can get. Alright, you flim flammers and honky tonks, that does it for part one of the overanalyzed adventures for the Golden Lake video game. Uh, thank you very much for your time, gals and gents. Are you drunk? Evans, answer me. Good lord, how much have you had? You're a hazard. What if I wanted to light a cigarette? You're a disgrace to the good name of this club. 